Maayong hapon mga pinalangga na kong Subuanon. Good afternoon to all who are watching us from other provinces and other cities in the Philippines as well as outside of our country. I am here on a live broadcast once again in order to give a report on what the province of Cebu has done since the onslaught of Typhoon Odette. In so far as uh, relief goods are concerned, the province gave to 36 LGUs immediately on the first meeting with our mayors, one million each in cash that the mayors could use immediately to purchase the goods needed and other um, necessities that had to be purchased in cash because at the time there was a lot of uh, hassle in uh, withdrawing cash from the banks necessitating the for the suppliers to demand cash payments instead of uh, checks so a total of 36 million has been distributed to 36 LGUs and these are Alcantara, Alcoy, Alegria, Aluginsan, Argao, Asturias, Bajan, Balamban, Barili, Bolhoon, Karkar City, Carmen, Katmon, City of Naga, Compostela, Consolacion, Cordoba, Dalaget, Danao, Dumanhug, Hinatilan, Liloan, Malabuyok, Mandawe, Minglanilla, Moalboal, Oslog, Pinamungahan, Ronda, Sambuan, San Fernando, Santander, Sibonga, Talisay, Toledo, and Tuburan. We also distributed a total of 41,306 sacks of NFA rice to the different uh, municipalities and cities that I had previously mentioned. The breakdown you can see uh, as will be posted in Subo News and uh, you are now seeing on the screen. A total as well of 1,381,800 cans were distributed to the 36 LGUs. as well as 1,297,300 cans of beef loaf again distributed to our 36 affected LGUs 523 boxes of coffee 502 boxes of noodles 822,360 bottles of water and uh, water tank deliveries of 10,000 liters each were uh, sent to 18 municipalities as seen on the screen. We also distributed chainsaws to the different municipalities as well as we have this as well as generators a total of 67 generators distributed to the different municipalities and cities these gensets as we distributed them came with 100 liters fuel uh, gasoline as well as for the, El for the municipalities of Malabuyok and Alegria, we sent 4,000 liters each. So those are the relief goods that we have distributed to the, our different LGUs. Tomorrow, I shall be this going around the first part of the first 
as well as the second and seventh districts and uh, to include Barili of the third district in order to personally deliver the cards that would correspond to those households whose houses have been totally damaged. These cards with uh, their respective QR codes are individually named. So the names are reflected in each of the cards. And these cards may be used to redeem the GI sheets, the fiber boards, as well as uh, the plywood that we have uh, previously distributed to our local government units. I would like to make an announcement that instead of the 5,000 worth of uh, per card, 5,000 worth of goods that they may redeem at the LGU or with our partner merchants, we have increased this to 8,000 pesos per card. These are for the totally damaged houses. And I shall be distributing that tomorrow, Wednesday, for part of the 1st, 2nd, the 7th districts, as well as Barili. And then on Thursday, I shall be going to the 3rd district, as well as part of the 1st district. And on Saturday, I shall be going north to our affected LGUs in the north. So... Dili na madugay, madawat na ninyo kamong mga nakalista, verified, validated as uh, having had your houses totally damaged. Now, we shall also include for all of these, these families a COVID kit which for one pack will contain 30 capsules vitamin C with zinc 30 tablets of vitamin B complex 20 tablets of Lagundi and 20 tablets of paracetamol these are initially for those families with uh, totally damaged houses There have been a lot of questions regarding the segregation of the vaccinated and the unvaccinated individuals, going so far as warnings even to barangay captains who are unvaxxed. But I think it is time for us to go back to Republic Act 115251 which is an act establishing the coronavirus disease 2019 or COVID-19 vaccination program expediting the vaccine procurement and administration process providing funds therefore and for other purposes so this is otherwise known as the national vaccination law this was signed by, uh, passed by both houses and signed into law by President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, February 26, 2021. Section 12. Section 12 letter G the issuance of a vaccine card is intended to be digital but shall remain accessible through other means such as printed cards the DOH through the Department of Information and Communications Technology shall develop the LGU based digital systems and applications that will meet the objectives of the COVID-19 vaccination program 
while maintaining quality, safety, ease of use, and accessibility for all Filipinos, provided that the DOH shall maintain a central database of vaccinations and mandate a uniform format for the vaccination card, the contents of which shall be updated accordingly to always conform with globally accepted standards. Now, and this is very important because it is in the law itself, provided further that the vaccine cards shall not be considered as an additional mandatory requirement for educational, employment, and other similar government transaction purposes. Let me repeat that. Provided further that the vaccine cards shall not be considered as an additional mandatory requirement for educational, employment, and other similar government transaction purposes. I think the law is very clear. How else can we interpret this other than saying that there should be no mandatory mandatory requirement of vaccine cards so that people may enter establishments, may enter schools, may go to work, or may enter government buildings or uh, avail of government services. It's very clear. So I cannot understand why this uh, movement towards now discriminating against the unvaccinated by refusing even their boarding of public buses, airplanes, and other means of transportation, as well as insisting, as a mayor now has complained to me, that teachers should show their vaccine cards before they can enter their own schools. This is the law. And unless this law is amended, even the national, the COVID-19 vaccination program law states that the vaccination card shall not be a mandatory requirement so that people may avail of educational as well as other government processes or even may avail of employment. This is very interesting. The following paragraph states, individuals vaccinated against COVID-19 as indicated in the vaccine card shall not be considered immune from COVID-19 unless otherwise declared by the DOH based on reliable scientific evidence and consensus. Well, I don't think there really now is unquestionable proof that vaccinated individuals are immune because, well, we are now seeing that with this Omicron virus variant, in fact, it is the vaccinated that are getting the symptoms. I think we are starting to get confused in treating the unvaccinated as the carriers of this virus. If, in fact, the vaccinated are not considered immune and therefore may also catch this virus, if they catch it, as they are now catching it, are they not as well carriers? 
So why is this discrimination against the unvaccinated? The DOH guidelines under Administrative Order 001. No, this is the Department of Health, the National Task Force Against COVID-19 or NTF guidelines dated March 26, 2021. Number, this is under letter J, number eight. The vaccine card shall not be considered as an additional mandatory requirement for educational employment and other similar government transaction purposes. An exact quote of section 12, letter G of Republic Act 115251. So let me make this very clear. From my interpretation of the law, which has, which has proven itself to be stated in very clear terms and has no ambiguity whatsoever, there can be no mandatory requirement of vaccination cards for entry to any establishment, whether these be schools, whether these be government buildings, whether this be places of work or for other purposes. And here in the province of Cebu, yes, we have put up border checkpoints. I want to also clarify this. When the news came out after the IATF declared an alert level three for Cebu province, I said, that insofar as the guidelines would conform with our efforts at recovery from Odette, Typhoon Odette, then that's okay. But if these clash, then it will have to be Cebu first. We will have to first focus on our rehabilitation and recovery after the devastation of Typhoon Odette. And so I said, there will be no lockdown, just to be very clear, and there will be no border controls. However, the PNP, particularly the Cebu Provincial Police Office, set up border checkpoints. I think uh, a news outfit mistakenly reported it as border control. No. There's a huge difference between border checkpoints and border control. Border checkpoints are put up, first of, uh, first of all, in compliance with COMELEC directive, that during the official campaign period, these checkpoints shall be set up. And these checkpoints further will be implement, re-implementing. It had been put on hold after we were devastated by Typhoon Odette, but we'll be again re-implementing Executive Order 35 and 35B, which mandates the uh, no overloading, a controlled capacity for all buses, opening of windows, no aircon, and uh, the need for the provincial utility vehicle pass, as well as the trip tickets that are issued by the provincial terminals, north and south. These are the items that are checked, including the wearing of face masks and air purifiers for our drivers. Those are the things that will be checked, but there will be no further requirement.
there will be no further requirement like the presentation of the vaccination card that is anti-poor. How can you require everyone to have this vaccination card presented for them to avail of public transport? As I have always said, vaccination is a matter of choice. Give that respect to the individual. It's a matter of choice. If you opt to have yourself vaccinated, and the province of Cebu has been very supportive of the vaccination program, giving all avenues and opportunities for everyone to be vaccinated. If you opt to get vaccinated, that's your choice. But if you choose not to be vaccinated, you should not be ostracized. Why? Let me just repeat this. It's in the law itself. Individuals vaccinated against COVID-19, as indicated in the vaccine card, shall not be considered immune from COVID-19 unless otherwise declared by the DOH based on reliable scientific evidence and consensus. So why this discrimination against the unvaccinated when even the vaccinated are not considered immune and may be carriers as well may also as what we are now seeing be infected with COVID-19 in spite of your two jobs and even your booster shot there is no scientific data that proves that it is the unvaccinated that infects people that they are the carriers So please, let us follow the law. We seem to have forgotten this. We still are a nation of laws, right? Not of men. So in the province of Cebu, we will not discriminate. And that is how we will proceed. So we are now on our recovery phase from Typhoon Odette. It's been uh, just a little over a month. I know that there are many that still need to rebuild their lives, to rebuild their homes. The province will do all that it can to help, even as our own local government units, our mayors are also doing their best. I would like to thank everyone that has uh, really come together in put together our united strength to rise above the difficulties that we have faced. In so far as the, the uh, continued Omicron variant uh, infection is concerned, I would advise you to, as the DOH has advised, for your mild symptoms, stay home. Do not panic. Do not look at the numbers. That's what causes the panic. Do not panic. That is why in our kit, we have paracetamol. We have uh, vitamin C. Take your vitamin C with zinc. And uh, lagundi. This is even already recommended by our own doctors here. Uh, by Dr. Jean Loreche and Dr. Brian Lim. And uh, of course, building maglagot. Do steam inhalation. Oh, laisyo na na ha. Bili na na katong bakya kayo nga. Too old. Steam inhalation. According to uh, Dr. Willie Ong. It is effective in treating flu, colds, here you go. Ang suob ay mabisang technique upang guminhawa at lumuwag ang mabigat na panghinga na dulot ng plema, ubo, lagnat at sipon. O, oh, kasabot na tayo mo, anak. So, your choice. 
But first and foremost, let's not panic. All indications, even the medical uh, field has stated, members of the medical profession have stated that the Omicron, though more infectious, has also milder symptoms and is in all Murag very, very similar to what used to be called colds, fever, or flu. Pero wa na na ron kay COVID naman. Wa na na ron. COVID Omicron. Pwede sa COVID Omic colds. Omic flu. Omic sipon. Yes? Question. Before pa po mga tanah about sa COVID ago, um, you mentioned nga mag-distribute na mo sa um, coupon, 8,000 coupon. The soon as ilang madawat ang coupon, pwede pa nilang ma-redeem dia dayon ang construction supplies in yun man ang basic needs. Yes. That is why I made sure na giunag yun na to deliver usa ang mga GI sheets o ang mga fiber boards including the umbrella nails. I hope ma-deliver sa nila tayo, no? So that they may, once these are distributed, by the way, these are segregated by barangay. Once the person receives it, he can redeem the GI sheets and the fiber board in the LGU. And of course, that is swiped and um, ma-deducted to sa iyang balance. However, kami said, we can redeem this. Iapas man ni This is the health kit, COVID health kit. They do not need to pay for this. By the way, sorry, uh, this is good. Thank you for asking. This will be free for our first uh, beneficiaries of the totally damaged. This will be free, but this will still be swiped so that uh, it will be it will be reflected in our central database that it is really the holder of the card who was able to receive this. So, a um, QR code is still needed to support the withdrawal of it, which, which we will also give to the LGUs. Um, uh, regarding the uh, COVID-19 code. By the way, I just want to, to add, aside from the GI sheets, I have to repeat this, Aside from the GI sheets and the ply and the fiber boards and plywood, they can also ang balance. They can also redeem it sa atong participating uh, supermarkets, Hardware. mga hardwares, general. and general general merchandise stores. So, dako dako na na ilang mapalit kay we have increased it to eight thousand pesos. Um, uh, regarding na sa COVID-19. Na ba mga additional na mga measures sa tungkol sa atong ato mga provincial and district uh, hospitals in man sa atong mga isolation areas alang sa mga adunay um, si uh, severe symptoms sa COVID or moderate po? You know, all of our hospitals now have molnopiravir. Uh, we received our first batch and it, this has now been distributed to all of our hospitals. We also have on stock a lot of paracetamol, vitamin C, and um, of course, all of our isolation centers, as we had previously done, are stocked with emergency drugs as well as oxygen tanks. But it seems that this Omicron virus now stays in the throat area and no longer goes down to the lungs. So there's more really of the, the sip on obo than the difficulty of breathing. Ang ato mga basic uh, medicine na uh, go apply like, ato para sa tabol o ba o ba pa um, dadan ba supply ang ato mga tambalanan ato mga provincial districts of yeah I just said that okay I just said that ano um, pa yung mga question ang dadan so we have stocked up on the basic meds because this it seems like it's really basic meds basic medicine but since 
na may bagong drug kanina pong molnupiravir so next stock up sa daan po mga panghinaot na to po subay na sa napaday na to covid response and ang atong rehabilitation a month after tanging ko sa pagbigay ah uh, you know kung pwede pa lang no magikira ko and i'll just wave the magic wand niya mabalik na tanan but you see we're hampered by our our being humans nga everything cannot be done with a flick of a finger but i think in fairness we have really moved um, as fast as we can i think uh, if by way of comparison we can compare the response the, and how quick it was with this typhoon odette as compared to typhoon yolanda which involved maybe only one third or about 12 LGUs. Nga mora na igo at to sa Typhoon Yolanda. And yet it took such a long time. Kiniron, 36 local government units. So times three. But we have uh, we have done uh, I think uh, much better. By the way, by next Monday, we will be again also handing out ceremonial to the 5,000 that I also promised for all of our PNP, the army that helped us, the uh, and the linemen. But that will be next Monday. Okay, ako iuna usa. Kato akong gisaad sa mga naguba yung mga balay. So, dagang salamat sa inyong pag uh, paminaw na mo karon and uh, I hope that by keeping the faith, no, mga subo anon, let us keep the faith. Kanunay mo padayong ta sa pag tuo nga ang Senyor Santiminio ana agi hapon mutabang ka nato inyong malauman nga isip inyong gobernador inyong makong gipili busa giisip ko gyud ning dako ka ang responsibilidad mao nang di bali kung unsa ko kakapoy or unsa ka taas ang akong adlaw kay alam ka nako gamay ra ka ini isip bugti sa inyong pagsalig ka nako and i will not let you down maying gabi eh. daghang salamat